Welcome back to the channel. You can tell we are in the middle of winter and we are a long ways away from the gardening season. However, Eric and I are going to be doing some canning today and I'm going to head inside and show you a little bit more what we're talking about. Now that we're in February, I can gauge our food stores better. I can see what foods we ran short on and want to grow more of next year. And I can also tell what we have a steady supply of. This year, things were amazing in the garden and we definitely were able to harvest a lot. We have a great supply of canned food, very thankful for that. We also have a bunch of meat still in the freezer for the time being. In fact, we have so much canned food still that we are fairly certain that it's going to roll over to this next year and we'll have extra, which is wonderful because sometimes certain years we don't do as well with some crops and it's just nice to kind of have that buffer, a little bit of extra food. Of course, there are things that we didn't do as well on. One of those was winter squash. I do not have a lot of winter squash because I just, they didn't work that well this last summer with the rainy season we had. And as far as onions and garlic, that did really well, but we did run short on those and I just have a handful of both of those left. Definitely want to grow more of that this upcoming season. We still have an awesome amount of produce that I was able to freeze and that's outside in our freezer. And if you remember me talking about root crops, I was going to try to store them inside here this year and I never really followed up with how well that went. As to be expected, it did not go that well because we live in a warm environment and it's just not ideal for storing root crops. If you remember, I put our carrots and beets and parsnips in these five gallon buckets with pine shavings that I had just moistened down a little bit. And the carrots did okay. I think they lasted two, I think they lasted about two to three months. We were definitely out of them into December possibly even November. We had to eat through those fast. They didn't last as long, but the beets actually did wonderful, uh, much, much better than I expected. We're approaching the middle of February and we still have beets. I still have this huge one here and it actually is still really good. I'm very surprised with how well this has tolerated the warmer temperatures inside of our cabin. I can't say the same for the potatoes. Those are about how I expected them to be. It's February and they made it to February. I had a feeling they would make it into this month, but they're not faring that well. Many of them have sprouted and some of them are getting soggy and that is why we are doing some canning today. We're gonna hop down to that lower cupboard and take a look and see what they look like. This was our little makeshift root cellar. I don't know if you guys remember us putting this in, but we just kind of had a counter space back here and there was no cupboard there. So we figured there was a bunch of wasted space that stayed nice and cool. So we cut a little section in there and I put these little brackets in here made out of two by sixes and a piece of cardboard to kind of keep light from being in there. And we shoved all our potatoes back there in a container. So we're bringing them out now. Okay, I didn't run on my foot, but there they are. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, let's. 80 pounds? I don't even know if that's 80 pounds. Yeah, 60 to 80 pounds. This isn't even all our potatoes, in fact. We had probably three times this amount. We yep. gave a lot away. We ate through a lot. We ate a lot were, of potatoes. These were like the really good ones I was putting aside to, to see if they would store until planting time. And they didn't. I mean, technically, you could probably... They, some of them are still really... Oh yeah, these are, I would eat these potatoes. Yeah, these are so. These are still really good. Do you think that they would? make, I mean, they would probably make it till planting time, possibly. Possibly. And then you get like really ridiculous ones like this. I mean, this thing's like three feet long. Out of just a little potato. This one's a little soggy, so. They're obviously sprouting. They were subjected to warmer temperatures, even though that we. I mean, I feel them. They're pretty cold. Um, I think it stayed maybe 50 degrees in there, but that's probably a little too warm for them. And primarily, you know, even though we blacked out that cupboard, it wasn't completely blacked out. So any sort of light will make potatoes sprout. So we're going to go through these. We're going to section them off into three categories. And we're going to have good potatoes for canning, really hard, firm ones, ones that are a little bit softer that Eric and I can eat. We can feed to the chickens or give to the dogs. And then if there's any bad ones, we're just going to be composting those. Hey, these are actually still so good. You notice the ones on the bottom are way good. They're colder, they're harder. Oh, sprout. How's it 
How's it going? Really chitty. We're going to be composting the sprouts. You don't want to eat them. I forget exactly what it is, but because they fall into that nightshades group, you don't want to eat the plant parts, um, especially if they're green. I know these aren't green, but this is, you know, a, a stem component of the plant. And in an ideal world, you would not can potatoes that are this old, but we have ones that are like Eric said, just so, so hard. I mean, this literally feels like I just dug it out of the ground. Yeah. So I feel totally comfortable peeling these and canning them. And that's just so we can actually have them and enjoy them, you know, maybe in the summer or next year when we hopefully don't grow as many potatoes again. Last year, we were actually able to plant the same potatoes that we harvested the fall prior. And that worked out really well. That's because we had the root cellar and the potatoes were able to store in great condition down there. This time around, it's obviously not ideal. I do think these could make it to planting time, but being that we're breaking off the sprouts, being that I had scab, um, I'm just gonna start with all new potatoes this year and I feel better doing that. I think, I don't think this is ideal to put these guys back in the ground. We're separating all the really, really nice ones. We're gonna put just a little bit aside for fresh eating and then we're going to be canning the rest. Before we get to peeling, I just wanted to show you what I'm kind of using to decide if they're good for canning or not. Um, I'm really only doing the ones that are just pristine and I have three soft ones and I have one hard one. And you can tell by cutting them if you're unsure just by feeling them. may not have really shown but what I was trying to get at is that you can feel with the knife and you can hear by the sound if it makes that crunch you can tell it's hard and if you squish them you know this one doesn't really give very much compared to like you know these ones when I squish them they really squish down because they're they're softer on the outside still really good for eating definitely okay for the chickens and the dogs but these are the only ones we want to can we're gonna be using these and boiling a batch of potatoes for the chickens and the dogs tonight and Eric and I have to get started on shucking potatoes. Look at that color. Doesn't that just bring you happiness? Minus the work. Looks just like a purple carrot. I know, it's beautiful. Black and nebula. Okay. Officially, I'm the worst peeler in the world. So I thought I was saying I'm gonna be here a long time <laughs> peeling this much potatoes. Like I swear, I can see myself here in at least two hours. <laughs> it just doesn't. It's not easy. It just takes a while. Do you remember the one time I did the peas for hours and then we didn't even like eat them because they turned out to not be good and I, my thumb was like dislocated. Oh my gosh. Or the time learned. we did the garlic. Oh, the garlic. The garlic was, was the worst. My hands are hands like down. A week. Garlic was the worst. <laughs> We've got all our potatoes peeled, cleaned up, and we're just gonna chop them into cubes. We're going for like one inch to two inch size potato cubes, something like that. This one's actually really good for nice, even cuts. Eric and I are keeping the purple and pink flesh potatoes separate because they will dye the whole jar product. We just want to have some that are white and not like purple and pink, pink mess. The purple ones will make, will pretty much turn everything very, very purple. We're going to cover these potatoes with water and we're going to bring this to a boil. Once it gets there, we're going to let them go for two minutes and then we're going to drain them and we're going to put them in clean jars and we're going to do quarts. So we've got our potatoes strained. I'm just gonna add them to the jars and then we're gonna add some hot, fresh boiling water on top of them. I 
I'm packed in the potatoes just a little bit and I'm leaving an inch headspace with the liquid. I'm going to wipe them with some vinegar and then I'm going to put the lids and bands on. So I'm putting these in our pressure canner and Eric already heated up the water in here so it matches the same temperature or similar temperature to the quartz that we're placing in there because these are very, very hot. All right, I'm gonna turn up the heat. We're gonna let this vent for 10 minutes. I'm gonna add our weight and we're gonna bring it to 11 pounds. Start the timer for 40 minutes and then these bad boys will be done. So our first batch of potatoes is done. Ooh. Very beautiful golden color. We're going to get started on our second batch and then we have the purple batch to do after that. And we will catch back up with you guys when we are all done. All right, we finished up our potatoes late last night. Super excited for them. We ended up doing the pink and the purple separate. It's a good thing, because this is how they turned out. In fact, they actually just look kind of more like a, a nude color. The purple is totally gone. The pinks and the purples look the exact same. This is what the white potatoes look like, or the yellow potatoes, and I think they are very attractive. We're really excited about these. We also have another fun project on the schedule today. We're going to be making mustard. Eric and I have been making mustard for a little bit over a year now. We absolutely love it. It is very, very simple to make. It's only a few ingredients from the mustard seeds to the mustard powder. Usually there's water, salt, and vinegar in the recipes. These are some of the ingredients that we're gonna be using for our mustard recipe today. And in fact, one of the best things about mustard is that there's so many variations and you can kind of just look up a recipe and go with what you want and what type of mustard suits you. What, what kind of flavors do you like? Eric and I personally gravitate towards spicy mustards or brown mustards. That is why I purchased some brown mustard seeds. You can also get yellow mustard seeds and you'll be able to do Dijon mustard and like the classic yellow mustard that you buy in the store. And you'll also need mustard powder. I have some yellow mustard powder here. We just ran out of our last mustard jar, which was a spicy brown mustard. And this time we want to mellow things out a little bit and even make it a little bit sweeter. So that's what we're doing today. I'm chopping up a yellow onion and a few garlic cloves soaked in some olive oil. I'm gonna be following more of a Dijon recipe, but I'm going to be altering it just a little bit. So I'm starting with two cups of white wine. We're gonna add that to the onions and the garlic. And then I'm gonna add one and a half cups of white wine vinegar. This is just a little bit over one and a half, actually. I wanted to finish that off. And we have a jar of the Cowboy Candy Marinade that we canned up in the summer, so I'm going to be adding that as well. We're going to let that simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes, and once it gets a little bit warmer, I'm actually going to add one whole cup of honey in there as well. That smells delicious. We're going to add the honey now. And then in just a little, I'm actually gonna strain the garlic and the onions out from the liquid. We're adding our dry ingredients in a bowl. I'm gonna be using two cups of the brown mustard seeds. And for honey Dijon, you usually use yellow mustard seeds, but I have a plethora of the brown mustard seeds, so I'm gonna try to finish those off first before I order anything. The brown mustard seeds are notoriously spicier than yellow or white mustard seeds, so you can kind of mellow them down depending upon how long you soak them and what temperature water you use if you use warmer water. I'm gonna also add one cup of yellow mustard powder. And we're adding two teaspoons of kosher salt. Gonna give that a quick mix. Okay. 
We're gonna let the seeds soak up that liquid probably for a half an hour or so. And then we're gonna be transferring everything to the blender to mix it up. And just remember this is just one way to make mustard. There are many different ways to do it from how you treat the seeds all the way to all the ingredients you're putting in. That's gonna give you the ultimate product at the end. I'm just gonna cover this up for now. We moved the mustard outside to cool down and help speed up the thickening process. In the meantime, we're actually going to start another project and we're making some barbecue sauce. This is a recipe that is not necessarily going to be replicable because of the ingredients we're using. I'll definitely include a link in the description if you're interested in canning and making some homemade barbecue sauce. We have some elderberry syrup that Eric and I made two years ago and we're actually not very big fans of it. We don't use it very much. And I also have some high bush cranberries that grow here. We turned them into jelly, but it didn't set. I didn't use enough pectin. So both of those berries kind of have an interesting flavor and I feel like they would be really nice with the barbecue sauce blend. We're also gonna be using tomato sauce. We've got some cowboy candy. We're gonna repurpose the onions and garlic that we use for our mustard. This may seem like a kind of strange thing I'm doing, but we have been canning for a few years and every once in a while we make something and it just doesn't turn out right or we don't really like it and end up using it. it. Doesn't happen that often, but we're very creative. We make a lot of our own recipes. So this is the result. Sometimes we get something like this and we're gonna repurpose it and make something awesome. Okay, that was the last one. And I actually gave these a little bit of a taste just so you could kind of know what we're working with. This one to me, this is the elderberry. It's a little bit fermented -y tasting and just being honest, it tastes like carrot juice and a berry juice mixed together. This other one is fabulous. I really like the high bush cranberries. Much sweeter, but tart at the same time too. I think this is gonna be awesome. So we're gonna get them in this sauce pot along with the tomato sauce and the cowboy candy. I'm putting these onions and garlic back in there. I'm also going to be adding about a cup of brown sugar, about a tablespoon of that dry mustard that we used earlier, and I'm going to add a cup of apple cider vinegar. This is the apple cider vinegar we made last year, and it's awesome. It definitely has gotten a little bit stronger, but it's still mild compared to something like this you'd buy from the store. We're going to add a whole bunch of spices, and then we're going to let this simmer until we get it to the consistency we want. And we're going to finish it off with some celery leaves. I'm pretty sure we created one of the best barbecue sauces. It is awesome. It's already reducing. Eric and I added some Labrador leaves to this mixture and one more tomato sauce to kind of give it a better balance of tang to sweetness. And it is freaking good. Spicy, really, really flavorful. We brought our mustard back in, but because it is a little bit more liquidy than I wanted. I am actually going to strain it real quickly to get the seeds out and I'm going to put the seeds in the blender first and then add back some of that liquid to get it kind of all intermingled. I'm going to start with a little bit over a cup of liquid and just see what happens. It's finally starting to thicken up. How long you blend them just depends on your, your choice. You know, we want them to be, to, the seeds to be broken up quite a bit. So I am blending it for a while. And I'm also trying to work back this liquid in there. That's an awesome consistency. That is what we are after. We're gonna go ahead and heat it back up to get it ready for canning. Since this is not a hard, fast recipe, there's always a little bit of troubleshooting to do. Um, so next time I made this, I would absolutely make it again. It's delicious. I would maybe use a little bit of yellow seeds. I'd use a little more powder like I am now and a little bit less liquid. As we let this cook down, we've also got our jars heating up in the background so we can have the timing all ready when we're ready to water bath them. Our mustard is ready to be jarred. I think we're gonna get around eight Half pints, maybe a little more. And the mustard does thicken up over time. 
This is just right now because everything's really hot. I've got these wiped down with vinegar. I left a quarter inch headspace and we're going to water bath them for 15 minutes. barbecue sauce has way thickened up. We are going to return this back to the heat and get it ready for canning. It's the same process as the mustard. We're going to let it go for 15 minutes in the water bath canner. The barbecue sauce looks awesome and we are all done with our canning for the day. It's time for dinner. Well, another day of canning has come to an end. It was a pretty good one. We got a lot done. We made an awesome dinner to kind of celebrate all of our hard work. We have some potato chips that I fried up in some moose fat. Of course, we have some moose burgers with some of that barbecue sauce on there. Turned out awesome. It's really spicy. Got some onions on top, and that's going to do it for today. We are going to eat.